The museum's basic mission is to inspire lifelong learning for all ages, and we focus on the arts and the sciences. And whenever possible, we try to integrate the arts and the sciences in some way that would be appropriate. This exhibit of works by Austin Wood Camaro is just um, a perfect fit for us, not to mention delightful. Uh, we like the way that one can enjoy it just on the level of art, or one can delve into the science behind it and sort of try to understand the magic of the art. It's been really, really good to have this during our big school tour period as well in the spring. Kids of all ages have enjoyed it, the little kids I think just as much as the older kids. It puts a smile on everybody's face. It's so much fun to bring people in here, kind of step back, give them their viewer, let them start and there's that wow, I mean truly the wow factor that people talk about, it is here in this work and we've just thoroughly enjoyed it. This is also an exhibit that unlike most, we really will be sorry to see it go. We always enjoy our exhibits and get very used to them. It's wonderful working in a museum to just come in anytime you want, go see your favorite piece, find a new favorite, that sort of thing. We learned about Austin's work from Mike Dalton, a local businessman, owner of Maui Jim Sunglasses. And about two years ago, we had an exhibit of trompe l'oeil art, uh, fool the eye art, contemporary, mostly paintings. And we were looking to do some add-ons along with that. And Mike said, you really need to see this work. This artist I work with is fantastic. I think it would fit right in and sounded interesting. So we had eight works shipped to us for that exhibit. And our visitors came upon the polages before they got to the actual exhibit. And in fact, it was really hard to get people back into the gallery with the trompe l'oeil works. They were so engaged and so in, uh, amazed and, and entranced, really, by the Austin's polages. Well, it didn't take us very long to realize that we needed more of this. So um, we contacted the artist and asked, is, is there any way we could have a, you know, 3,000 square feet worth of your work? And so over a year and a half, we put together this show, which is a wonderful retrospective, starting with the very first work, very simple, very unsophisticated, very direct. Um, and it really explores her whole, her whole journey in learning about polarization and learning what she can do to create art in this medium that no one else uses, um, that she's invented really. Um, so it's, it's been a, a really an amazing um, relationship and journey for the museum. We don't very often get to do this, just discover someone and then bring an even larger exhibit to our, our audiences. Austin started her work at a time when abstract expressionism was, shall we say, the rage. And it was what her professors were pushing the students to do in the 60s. Luckily for us, Austin wanted something else, and she wanted something with more realism. And she, she wasn't alone in that. There were certainly other artists who did find some way to bring the figure or the landscape back into art. In speaking of Austin as an artist and how you know, she fits into the artistic tradition, she certainly has found her own inspirations in the classics, um, Botticelli, Caravaggio, other artists who were interested in the figure in a certain way, other interests who were, artists who were certainly interested in, I think, nature and springtime and that kind of growth and birth ideas. It's wonderful that we have some of her charcoal drawings and a few paintings in the exhibit as well. But even in the, the collages where she has collaged the cellophane together into her, into her, her works, um, you, you get the sense of her as an artist, her understanding of color, of balance, of composition, all of those key factors that the art critic looks at. She has this wonderful way of depicting the realistic elements in a naturalistic way, very true to life. Um, you know exactly what they are. There's a lot of detail in them, the flowers, the leaves, all that sort of thing, the animals. But then the humans, which you, I wasn't aware at first, I, I really had to look for a while before I realized they're abstracted, they're uh, less physical, they're more ethereal, um, and, and that helps to emphasize this distinction between us. Um, and she really is celebrating the natural part. Um, our, our care and concern for nature and our care and concern for each other, that's also an important concept for Austin. We've tried in our installation of this particular show um, to 
give, well, to present the works in a way that the audience can sort of grow into them. The viewer gets to take a journey, as it were, not literally through um, from start to finish of her work, but a journey through the different techniques that she has evolved and used in her artwork so that um, you can kind of grow with it and explore it and sort of keep discovering as you go. Not only are you discovering images in the works because they change, but you're discovering um, how she's been able to manipulate the idea of polarization and her medium. The public, as I said, just you know, loves to see what's next. I think people really are finding their favorites. Everyone's amazed at how everyone can tell how much work must have been involved. I mean, how, how, how much work must be involved in putting these together. I also find that this art brings out our true selves. We may come in with a pretense, we may come in with a facade that we have to have because we're in the museum and we have to be serious, but no one can maintain that. Once we start to look at the work, you, you hear people speaking from their heart um, and you see their true soul reacting and responding.